How's it going, PD team? I had a massive realization last night that made me feel kind of stupid. I've been after Maxon for a feature request in regards to variable inputs on a noise output section. By default, it gives you that lame warning. This port needs a constant value. When plugging into other nodes, into the ports, like user data or other noises, an absolutely frustrating situation. Well, last night, I realized I could fix it and just do it myself. So here we are. As the saying goes, you want it done right or on time, do it yourself. Well, with that being said, let's dive in. So I want to show you the problem that you might run into when you are building out complex node structures using the max on noise node. So with the max on noise, you can put values in any of these inputs except for the seed and the output section. So you've been tempted probably to put in different controls for the contrast, the brightness, the high clip, the low clip, or the cycles and ran into an issue. So let me go ahead and plug these in here. So I'll enable a couple of these and let's just go ahead and put a user data, let's say on contrast. Then you turns red and it gives you this error. And if we roll over the node, there's our error. This port needs a constant value. Well, so this user data is a variable and let's say we want to control it using some Espresso or some user data. Well, you're not able to do that until now. So let's try and go ahead and plug in the max on noise and the same issue occurs. You can't plug it into any of these. Let's go ahead and take a, take a look at the node that I created that fixes this problem. So I present to you the noise output override node. This node overrides these inputs and gives you the same access right here. So these mirror these inputs. So we can go ahead and plug in a noise into contrast or plug in a variable into the contrast or any one of these slots. You can see they all work. Here's the settings for the node. You can see they mirror exactly the same as the output section within the noise. We've got cycle, low clip, high clip, and brightness and contrast. So if I go to contrast and turn it up, you can see it works exactly the same. Brightness works the same and even cycles in low clip and high clip. So let's go ahead and build this out. Okay, so I've got a simple material here where I've brought down the reflection and it's just a standard material and I've plugged in a max on noise into the color channel. As I stated before, these do not allow variable inputs like noises or user data. So let's go ahead and build a node that overrides these. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and say create empty group. Give it a name. I called my noise output override. Give it a color. There we go. And we're going to take our input, plug it in, take our input, plug it in. And we're rename this noise in, noise out. Then we're going to go inside. And what we want to do is we want to first, we'll start off with adding contrast. So contrast can be done using the gain node. So I'm going to type in gain and we're doing float gain and rename it to contrast. And we're going to be plugging these in series, which means they're going to be in line with each other. So we're going to come in here and plug this into the input and plug this to the output. Okay, now that we've added the contrast node, you can see it goes from zero to one. We want to remap these to be negative one to one because that's how the contrast node works. And if I go back here, you can see the middle point is zero, goes to positive one, negative one. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to override it by using a change range and we'll do a float change range. We don't need the inputs. We also need a value. Give your value a color. So this value, we want to be able to do negative one to one. So when we plug this in, we're going to change the inputs from negative one to one, and it's going to spit us out a zero to one. And there we go. So now if I set this to one, we should have full contrast. Okay. So you can see that we have full contrast in our image here. If I set this to negative 0.75, we'll have less contrast. And there we go. So I'll set this to zero. So that's working. Next, what we want to do is let's go ahead and add brightness. So I'll double click. And for this one, we're going to use what's called the bias node. Do the float bias. We'll rename it to brightness. Give us some more space here. And this one we're going to add before the gain. So I'll plug this into here like so. So next brightness gets attacked. And then what we can do is we can duplicate these nodes here because these work exactly the same. Control drag, plug this into here and there's brightness. I'll rename this to brightness and this float value to contrast. Next, what we want to do is we want to adjust the high clip and the low clip. So for this one, we're going to be using the divider node. So I'm going to come in here and type in div float divider and I'll rename this to high clip. This one gets plugged in to here and then this one gets pl plugged into next, the input of brightness. And this just gets a value here. So we'll rename this value to high clip and high clip clip, the default value is set to one and we plug it in. The next node we're going to do is low clip, which uses the sub, which is subtract. And this one gets plugged into here. And then this gets plugged into the output, into the input. We'll rename this one to low clip and we'll take this float value. We'll call this low clip and the default value is set to zero. Plug it into the input. So how this is working is our low clip is just subtracting. Our high clip is dividing. Our brightness is biasing it and our contrast is adding gain. So the next one is kind of tricky. We're going to create a modulo loop for the cycles. If you don't find yourself needing to use this, uh, you can go ahead and
and skip this part. I'm going to go ahead and build it out. I've covered this in other tutorials. If you look at the planet shader or any of the other materials where I loop, I'll link in the description below where I've done this. But basically what we do is we add a multiply node. So MUL, and this is going to be how many times it loops. So our loop count gets plugged in. So we're going to take our input and then we're going to take our modulo node. So MOD, plug that in and we leave this to default to one. This gets plugged in and this gets plugged in. And then our last node that we need to get plugged in is the ramp. And I'll explain why we need to have a ramp in here in a second. So we're going to take this, plug this into here, and then plug this into our output. So what we plug into this second input of our first node, the multiply node, is a value, and that's how many times it loops. So we'll add this in here, and we'll call this cycles. And this value, we can leave on float, and we plug it into the second value of the multiply node. So we're taking our noise, putting it into the first value. Our second value is how many times it loops. It gets looped using the mod, and then it gets remapped using the ramp. And the reason we loop it with a ramp is because if I override this, is because our noise, when we cycle it, we need this middle value to be white and this to be black. If we don't do that, we get banding. So I'm going to take this and set this to 50% on the knot. And we need this to be a cycle where it loops perfectly. So we'll add our black value at the very end like that. So this is at zero. This is at 50% knot. And this is 100% knot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. So you made it this far. Clearly, you're enjoying the content. Would you consider clicking the thanks button on this video to help grow the channel's community so I can make more great content just for you? Any amount is greatly appreciated. If money is tight right now, then do me a favor and just smash that like like button immediately. Now to the video. And so let's go ahead and plug these values in and get it working. So I'll do it in order. So I'm going to do cycles first, the low clip next, high clip next, brightness next, and contrast next. And that's our final output. And that's our final input. So here is the node completed. So let's go ahead and try it out. And our cycles needs to be set to 0.5 for it to work. Now we can try the high clip. So I'm going to just click once here. You can see it's clipping the blacks, bring this down, clipping the whites. So that's working. Our brightness, brightening it, darkening it, and then our contrast, removing contrast. And there we go. So everything is working perfectly. Let's go ahead and clean this node up and build out the UI. And there we go. So it's all cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say edit resources. And with this scary dialog, we're going to go to cycles. And we're going to put the default value to 0.05. And the steps, we're going to do 0.1. And the slider limits, we'll put to 0.5 and to 10 for max. So there's the slider for cycles. Then low clip, we're going to enable this, set the value to 1 on the slider max. And the steps, we'll do 0.01 and leave the default to 0. High clip, default value is set to 1. We'll go to our slider limits, add one to the maximum step. We're going to do 0 0.01 again. And then brightness, default value is set to zero. Steps 0 0.01. And the min and max values, we're going to put negative one and positive one. We're going to do the same for the contrast. So min and max, we'll do negative one, positive one. Step size 0 0.01. And there you go. So there's our controllers. So you can see the contrast slides between negative one and positive one. Same with contrast. High clip trims the brightness. Low clip trims the dark values. And cycles set. Now, before we wrap this node up, I want to address one issue that you're going to notice. So if I was to take this noise and plug it directly into the color node, into the color input, and also swap between that and the override, you're going to notice there's a contrast pop. So let's go ahead and fix that. So to fix this, we're going to select our ramp and select each of these knots. Shift select all three, and we're going to go to linear. And that fixed the contrast issue that we were having. Not only is this a noise output override module, but it also can be used as a simple black and white color correction node, where you just need to adjust the brightness values, the contrast, or the low clip and high clip. So it can be used as a color correct node as well. Don't forget, when you're done with the project, go ahead and save it, duplicate the node, so control drag, and then go up to asset, convert to asset, so you can use it later. That is the completed noise output override node. Now you can plug in any value that you want. You can do user data in the contrast, and it'll work. We can put noises in the contrast, and that will work. You can see it updates in the port. You're going to find this extremely useful when you don't have access to the output options here in the noise by default. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.